Tapa, let's take you now to the NDC's headquarters. This morning we'll be addressing you on the matter of the referral of the former Deputy Attorney General and Member of Parliament for Boligatanga East, Dr. Aine, to the Disciplinary Committee of the General Legal Council by the Chief Justice of the Republic. But before we proceed with that, permit me to acknowledge media stations who are streaming this press conference live on their esteemed platforms. On social media, we are live on Ways on TV and the NDC Communication Bureau pages on Twitter and Facebook. In the greater Accra region, we are live on GH1 Television, Metro TV, and I believe Joy News TV, Pan African TV, Home Base TV, TV XYZ, Power 97.9 FM, Asempa 94.7 FM, and Ahoto 92.3 FM. In the Eastern region, as always, we are live on Oko FM, Afram FM, and Radio 1 FM. In the Central region, we are live on Coastal FM, Benya FM, Live FM, Sweet FM, Rich FM, Ubrumankuma FM, and Haba Radio. In the Uti region, we are live on Uti Radio, Boim FM, Gateway Radio, Nuasa Radio, and Key FM. We are live on High Radio in the Hafa region, and on Inkyugi FM in the Savannah region. We are also live on Vota One TV, Seller Radio, and Global FM, all in the Vota region. In the Upper East region, we are live on Word FM, Zebs FM, Source FM. And in the Northern region, we are live on Diamond FM, Kesme FM, Bishara FM, Radio Tamale, Mind FM, Asase FM, Suhu Peli FM. In the Western region, we are live on Fact FM, Trinity FM, Empire FM, Radio 360 FM, Sharp FM, and Western FM. In the Upper West region, we are live on Tumpani FM, WFM, Golu FM, and Radio Wa FM. In the Northeast region, we are live on Lom FM and Scap FM. In the Blue region, we are live on Tyne FM, Instrument FM, and Jinyame FM. In the Blue East region, Akina Radio, Fabia FM, and Atubu FM. And in the Western region, we are live on Akwaba FM. And on Kumase FM in the Ashanti region. Uh, let me also acknowledge the presence of members of the Functional Executive Committee of the party who are here. Uh, Deputy National Communications Officer Kukubwa is here, a Director for Communications, Lawyer Kakri Samwa is also here. Uh, I see Alain Judoku on the podium as well, and our Director um, of Administration at the party headquarters is also here. Now, uh, without wasting much time, and let me, before I do this, let me humbly appeal to you once again to put your phones on silent. And can, please let's uh, reduce the movements so that we can have an orderly engagement. And so without wasting much time, ladies and gentlemen of the media, I welcome to the podium the Chief Executive Officer of the NDC, the General Secretary of our party, Honorable Johnson Asiedun Ketia to address us. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the media. We thank you for honoring our invitation at such a short notice, and we are most grateful for your continuous collaboration with us towards building a better Ghana. The National Democratic Congress 
has become aware of a petition to the General Legal Council in which the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana himself, Justice Kwesi Enin Yeboa, acting as a complainant, is seeking to have disciplinary action taken against Honorable Dr. Dominic Ayini, the NDC Member of Parliament for Bulga East, who is also Chairman of the Subsidiary <coughs> Legislation Committee of Parliament. According to the letter from the Judicial Secretary to the Disciplinary Committee Chairperson of the General Legal Council, statements that Honorable Dr. Ayene Dominic made during a panel discussion on presidential election petition and their impact on Africa's democracy organized under the auspices of the Center for Democratic Development, CDD, calls for such disciplinary action. During the panel discussion referred to above, when asked about what he made of the independence of the judiciary in the wake of decisions in the course of the recent 2020 election petition, Dr. Ayene stated his honest, well-reasoned, and well-researched view as not only an academic of so many years standing but also a lawyer of high repute, a former Deputy Attorney General of the Republic, a member of Parliament and Chairman of Parliament Subsidiary Legislative Committee. It therefore came as a shock to many in academia, civil society, the legal fraternity, and indeed to us in the National Democratic Congress, that the Chief Justice has initiated processes to have Dr. Ayene investigated and disciplined for his comments. Friends from the media, let me state here and now that the National Democratic Congress stands with Dr. Ayene against what is increasingly becoming a campaign of judicial tyranny being waged by no less a person than the Chief Justice of the Republic against lawyers who identify with the NDC. Indeed, the latest persecution of Dr. Ayene is part of a grand agenda by the current Chief Justice to intimidate, cower, and muzzle all dissenting voices, particularly those in the NDC, who dare to speak against some of the strange decisions that characterize the 2020 presidential election petition. As you may be aware, only a few months ago, some lawyers with NDC leanings, specifically lawyer Abraham Amaliba and lawyer David Annan, were hauled to this same disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council by the same Chief Justice in similar fashion and harassed for expressing their views on the constitution of the Supreme Court panel that heard the 2020 election petition. Also, not long ago, the Honorable Roxanne Nelson K. Eche Dafia Mapo, the NDC member of parliament for South Dine, received a similar invitation to appear before the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, Dr. Ayene spoke at a roundtable discussion which had other lawyers and academics brought together to analyze the impact of presidential election petitions on our democracy. When the question about confidence in the independence of the judiciary was posed, lawyer Yao Opong, a member of President Akufuado's legal team, responded that he thought Ghana's judiciary was independent. Dr. Ayene, on his part, expressed the view that his confidence in the independence of the judiciary has been dampened by the way the court determines some of the interlocutory applications of the petitioner without due regard to judicial precedents and settled rules and practices. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, the way in which the Supreme Court in, hearing, in the hearing of the 2020 election petition 
continuously shielded the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Mrs. Jean Adukwe Mensa, from scrutiny and accountability, has been the subject of critical comment by many people. Indeed, much of the criticism has been from people who are in no way associated with the National Democratic Congress. We must say we are also struck by how positions that the current Chief Justice, Justice took in the 2012 election petition are completely opposite to his positions in the 2020 election petition. And we may ask what has changed. Let me read to you a few sentences from Justice of the Supreme Court as he then was when he dissented in respect of a ruling concerning whether the Electoral Commission should be ordered to produce certain documents. He said, and I quote, in a serious matter in which the mandate of the entire voters of this country is being questioned through the judicial process, one expected the second respondent as the sole body responsible for the conduct of elections to have exhibited utmost degree of candor to assist the court in arriving at the truth. Surprisingly, the second respondent electoral commission opted for filing no pink sheets, leaving this court unassisted and thereby placing reliance only on the pink sheets supplied to the agents of the petitioners at the various polling stations in, in issue. Why the second respondent elected to deny assistance to a court of law in search of the truth in a monumental case of this nature is beyond my comprehension. He continued, I think this must be deprecated in view of the constitutional autonomy granted to it to perform such vital functions under the constitution for the advancement of our democratic governance, unquote. And that was Justice Anin in 2013. Yet, in the recent election petition, the same Chief Justice Anin dismissed every single application on behalf of the petitioner to have the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, the same Electoral Commission, assist the court to establish the same truth. In 2013, Dr. Farijan went into the witness box and was subjected to extensive cross-examination. That was not enough for Justice Anin Yebua then. This time, Mrs. Jean Mensah, having sworn to a witness statement and sworn to affidavits to the effect that she would be available for cross-examination, chose not to testify. Even an attempt to reopen the case of the petitioner to enable her be subpoenaed was rejected by the same Chief Justice and his colleagues. Why was the conduct of Mrs. Jim Mensa not deprecated this time around? How does the Chief Justice, Justice Anin Yeboa, expect Ghanaians to have confidence in his impartiality and fair-mindedness as a judge in the face of these contradictory decisions by him? Also, the way and manner the Supreme Court unanimously dismissed virtually all the interlocutory applications of the petitioner without regard for the law, in some instances, further dampened our hopes in that important arm of government. You may recall, for instance, that in their ruling on the application by the petitioner to reopen his case to call the EC chairperson as a an adverse witness. The Supreme Court disregarded the clear provisions of the Evidence Act of Ghana, which is the law in Ghana, and opted for a wrong interpretation of the Black Law Dictionary, Black Law Dictionary of UK. Black Law Dic uh, Dictionary's definition of adverse witness. We all know that where 
the law does not explicitly provide for any subject. You may borrow from other jurisdictions, but clearly not where your law states clearly what you operate in Ghana. You abandon that one and you go looking for advice from dictionaries elsewhere. In that ruling, the court said that a person cannot be an adverse witness until he has already mounted the witness box. Despite the clear provisions of the Evidence Act of Ghana, which provides that in a civil action, a party or a person whose relationship to a party makes the interests of that person substantially the same as a party, may be called by an adverse party and examined as if on cross-examination at any time during the presentation of evidence by the party calling the witness. When the petitioner applied for a review of his, this decision and the court was presented with a golden opportunity to correct this clear error of law, the court refused to do so without any plausible reason. How then can anybody fault Dr. Yini for saying that his hopes about the independence of the judiciary was dampened by the way and manner the court failed to apply the law and judicial precedence in dealing with some interlocutory applications of the petition. Friends from the media, our position on this matter is simple. Dr. Yeni's views about the independence of the judiciary are views he's entitled to, in line with his freedom of expression guaranteed under the 1992 Constitution. He was courteous to the court and kept his language temperate and decent. He stayed within the bounds of professionalism. He was neither scurrilous nor scandalous. For him to be accused by the Chief Justice of disparaging Ghana's judiciary over these tempered and justified comments is not only bizarre and unfortunate, but speaks volumes about the Chief Justice himself. Clearly, the opinion expressed by Dr. Ayeni, which we in the NDC share without any equivocation, is not actionable and does not violate any rule of, of professional conduct for lawyers. As a matter of fact, neither Dr. Ayeni nor we in NDC can be compelled, and I repeat, can be compelled to increase our confidence in the independence of the judiciary, even when the court has not given us any basis or reason so to do. The Chief Justice ought to be reminded that according to Article 125 of our Constitution, justice emanates from the people and is administered on behalf of the Republic by the judiciary, we shall be independent. Public confidence in the independence of the judiciary must therefore be earned and not be forced on us. Nobody can force anybody to have confidence in a system that does not justify that confidence. It is naturally not possible. So if you want me to have confidence in you, you must demonstrate by your actions that you deserve that confidence. I cannot be compelled by any dictator to have confidence in anything that I don't have confidence in. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we are concerned at the seeming judicial dictatorship that is fast festering under the leadership of the current Chief Justice. An unwelcome development which threatens free speech and could potentially undermine our justice system. You recall that not so long ago, and immediately before the judgment 
on the elections petition was pronounced. The Chief Justice instructed his private lawyer, Mr. Tedu Sorry, to issue a threatening letter to media houses in the country, ostensibly to restrict public criticism of the court on grounds that the Ghanaian people are uneducated and uninformed about legal issues. When there was public uproar, it was then claimed that the letter was not aimed at preventing criticism of decisions of the Supreme Court in the media. So you see how it proceeded. You were going to announce a verdict. For some reason, you yourself took the position that that verdict will be criticized. And so you issue a warning that no media house should criticize you because we are all not learned in the law. How many times have you seen any court or heard any court telling anybody that I am going to give a judgment, but I'm warning you not to talk about the judgment? So what does it tell you about your own belief in the judgment you are going to deliver? Why are you not expecting that after delivering the judgment, all the media houses will be praising you for doing a good job. Why didn't you think like that? And you simply assume that they will be criticizing me. So it means that that is an admission that what you are about to do was wrong. And it didn't end there. Now you have done it. And we are talking about it and you say we cannot talk about it we will continue talking about it. Our children will come and talk about it. And our grandchildren will come and talk about it. And this judgment will be studied in all the law schools in this country. Because the Supreme Court is a court of record. The judiciary, ladies and gentlemen, like parliament or the executive, is not above criticism. Indeed, it is worth recalling that the recent Re Akuto event in Kumasi, where an address was delivered on behalf of the Chief Justice, was an event to criticize a 60-year-old decision of the Supreme Court. The event was dominated by politicians of the New Patriotic Party stock, who used the occasion to express their critical views freely. So you see now, the Chief Justice, the President, everybody is free to criticize one Supreme Court decision. But even members of Parliament are not free to criticize another Supreme Court decision. What type of country then are we living in? We wish to reiterate the fact that the invitation of Dr. Yene to appear before the General Legal Council is yet another attempt by the Chief Justice to intimidate and suppress views that are at variance with his own views. Even if the Chief Justice disagrees with Dr. Yene's views or deems same as erroneous, the statement made were decorous expressions of opinion about a judgment delivered by the Supreme Court of Ghana and do not warrant professional discipline. Our progressive march as a constitutional democracy will suffer a grave setback if the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council were to proceed to hold an inquiry into the matter of Dr. Yene's statements at the CDD event. Our constitution and laws protect the integrity and independence of the judiciary and not the sensibilities of judges. I want to take that again. 
our constitution and laws protect the integrity and independence of the judiciary and not the sensibilities of judges. Judicial vanity is a threat to justice and must not be countenanced in any democracy. We therefore join all well-meaning Ghanaians to demand that the Chief Justice withdraws his petition against Dr. Ayeni forthwith. We further serve notice that as a political party, we are keenly following events and shall resist any judicial tyranny with all our might. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we wish to state that even as the action taken against Dr. Yene is unjustified, it is but a symptom of a larger problem. It is no coincidence that virtually all the lawyers who have been reported to the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council by the Chief Justice, Justice Kwesi Enim Yebua, in recent times are aligned to the NDC. What is the Chief Justice's personal interest in the punishment of NDC affiliated lawyers that he's so keen to initiate unwarranted actions against them? We dare say that such treatment will not be meted out to lawyers who are aligned to the MPP for reasons best known to the Chief Justice himself. After the 2013 election petition verdict was delivered by the Supreme Court, lawyer Sam Okujeto, at a symposium organized by the Damkwa Institute, took some of the justices of the Supreme Court to the cleaners and gave his own interpretation of the judgment, contrary to what the court had determined. Also recently, when the High Court Human Rights Division presided by Justice Gifty J. Addo, ruled against the General Legal Council in an application brought by lawyer Francis Sosu. Lawyer Sam Okujeto once again went to town, attacking and questioning the capacity of the judge who quashed the decisions of the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council, of which he is a member. Lawyer Sam Okujeto is also a leading member of the New Patriotic Party and the Council of State. Why was he not referred to the General Legal Council for disciplinary action by the current Chief Justice, Justice Kwesi Eninyebwa? What about the several MPP-affiliated lawyers, including a lawyer on record who made many prejudicial comments and sought to seduce the Supreme Court during the hearing of the 2020 election petition. The respect accorded the judiciary is one that ought to be earned due to the ability of members of that important arm of government to show equanimity, balance, and fairness to all manner of persons irrespective of their political or ethnic coloration. That respect cannot be run down the truth of anyone through acts of suppression and brazen acts of intimidation. The notion that the judicial arm of government is beyond reproach is but a fantasy which cannot be sustained. The same is utterly inimical to democratic practice and must not be countenanced. If these actions by the Chief Justice are intended to browbeat the NDC and its members, and prevents us from stating our views on the performance of the judiciary, we, thereby, we hereby state categorically that we, they will not succeed. We will not be intimidated. We, as a party, will continue to defend the cause of freedom and of right in this country. We do not strive to put in place the building blocks of a sustainable democracy only to allow judicial tyranny to rear its ugly head. And we will never be intimidated by partisan occupants of state institutions, no matter the cost. 
And to conclude, I'd like to refer to the words in the original slogan of NDC. And it says that NDC, no retreat, no surrender, no curve, no bend, straight on to victory. May God bless our homeland, Ghana. Thank you. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, there you have it. Thank you very much, sir, for that courageous, insightful presentation. If you have any question at this juncture, you can raise up your hand. You come to the front, we'll give you a microphone, you tell us your name and your media house, and then you ask your question. Um, please, any questions? If you have a question, let me see your hand. OK. You have a question? OK, then come this way. Any other question? OK. You can also come this way. Any other hand? OK. So let's take the two for now. Pat Carl Wilson. General, good morning. Uh, good morning to my colleagues here. Good uh, Quick one. General, um, one would just ask, uh, as the General Secretary of the NDC, uh, what locus do you have, the expertise you have to determine whether indeed the comment made by uh, Dr. Ayeni is not disparaging and not a slight on the integrity of the judges at the U.S. courts. And then two, that those who are saying that we should all proceed with caution because an attack on the judiciary uh, could mean destabilizing the country's democracy because a mistrust of the judiciary would amount to some level of chaos. How do we respond to that? And finally, in your last expression, you said, I can't quote the date to that, uh, to suggest that individuals are uh, occupying states' uh, positions in, in a partisan manner. Just for clarity, I therefore suggest that the CJ is there to do the bidding of the NPP. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next, ne okay, next so question. My name is Mr. Roku TVXYZ. This is to ask that I've heard people say that the NDC has a party is not serious to do anything and only do a stop talking. Because prior to this election petition, there were a lot of comments and things that the NDC could have done that didn't happen. Now there's a verdict and your members have been intimidated. And it's just talking, so we should not expect anything different from the NDC. How do you react to those comments? All right, thank you. Any other? OK, so we have five questions from two people. General will answer the questions. And uh, for the purposes of um, the account stations here, he will do a brief summary of his presentation in three. We'll plead with you that you keep your cameras in their positions. Let's restrict the movement. It will be very brief, and then we can uh, wrap it up. Thank you. Yeah. The first question has to do with the locus I have as a general secretary. The general secretaryship is not my only locus. My first locus is a Ghanaian citizen called Asie Dunketia from Sekwa, who pay taxes. That is my first locus. And my second locus in determining whether the invitation was, uh, is right or not, it's my common sense. Yeah. So everybody has a way of interpreting uh, whatever they are faced with. According to my common sense, it doesn't make sense to invite Dr. Ayene to that visit. And uh, the second one is about attack on the judiciary being dangerous to our democracy. Well, if the judiciary is not independent, what are we supposed to do if the judiciary is conducting itself to create the impression that they are not independent? So are you saying that faced with the choice of pointing out what is wrong for it to be corrected and keeping quiet. Which option will help our democracy? We have chosen the side of pointing out what is wrong so that we have opportunity to correct it. 
we cannot keep quiet over something that we consider to be wrong about any state institution. And indeed, we are happy that the president agrees with us about what we are doing. Because on January 7th, he called us to be participants and not spectators. What does he mean by that? Participate in governance. Your role as a citizen doesn't end with the voting, casting of vote. You must actively participate, criticize, monitor, give praise when praise is due. The work of democratic institutions in the country, because democracy is about rule of law, not rule of men. And the institutions, once they are provided for by the Constitution, cannot be perfect from the beginning. It takes public criticism of their work to straighten their ways, to improve their performance. That is why we have, it is not just the locals we have, we have a duty to criticize what we consider to be wrong if we want to behave like uh, good citizens of this country. We are duty bound. So those who are quiet in the face of wrongdoing have decided to be on the side of the wrongdoer. So if you see something going wrong, you must point it out so that there will be a chance of it being corrected. That is why we are, say, we are speaking the way we are speaking. So you must, the danger that is posed to a country by a judiciary that is perceived not to be independent is greater than the criticism that any citizen will raise against the performance of such judiciary. And there is documented research in this country that suggests that over 80% of Ghanaians don't consider the judiciary to be independent. If Article 125 of our Constitution says that justice emanates from the people, and 85% of the people from whom justice emanates, and for whom the judiciary is to deliver that justice, they believe that that judiciary is not delivering the justice. Do you think that you will be playing your role as a good citizen to keep quiet over that? There must be something which is worth investigating. Maybe the research findings could be wrong. But we cannot sit idly by, not talking about it. Maybe what you are doing, as you have claimed earlier on, that the rest of us don't understand law. So you alone understand your law. So when you do something, we cannot talk. Then let us appoint illiterates like us, who represent us, to deliver justice, because the justice is being delivered uh, on our behalf. Yes. So we cannot have justice that we don't understand. That is why we are talking. And judicial decisions must make sense to the ordinary people. And if in our uh, uninformed minds, your enlightened decisions don't make sense. <laughs> we have to talk for you to know how many fools you have out there who don't understand <laughs> the judicial decisions. So that you can make an effort to educate us to understand your decisions. Were you not in this country when Kennedy and Japan actually insulted members of the judiciary in unprintable language. What happened? The matter didn't even go to any judicial whatever. It went to the court, presided over by the same judges who were insulted. <laughs> uh, 
and they were running away. So if you create the impression that you enjoy the insults at that time, if people don't have confidence in you, now who calls them? Now another person says, talk, 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 talk. We are not supposed to fight in a democracy. Democracy is about talking. That is why we will continue talking. The day we will stop talking in a democracy, that democracy is headed for trouble. So that is the difference between autocracy and democracy. It is the belief in democracy that expression of your views, ideas, openly. Oh, blow away the heat and keep the society stable. What I'm saying today, if I haven't said it, on behalf of the party, many party members will be keeping those things in their heads. And you may not know how they will react. So if you are in a democracy and you are silencing dissent, it's like blowing air into a balloon. If somebody is standing beside you and say, this balloon will burst, and you won't stop blowing the air, and you won't allow any space for the air to escape, then you can only head for a situation where the balloon will burst on your face. There is no way of making rose not smell sweet by calling it by any other name. Rose smells sweet and it will continue smelling sweet. So if you call it by whatever name, it will still smell sweet. So the truth must be told. The general statement we made about uh, you know, state positions that could be occupied by partisans. It's a general statement about all state institutions in this country. So, go and measure your head. If you think this cap fits you, put it on. Thank you. Yo. <laughs> Now, him fear the I was try and frame one, no pay. And it's a Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Isidu Nkitia, uh, speaking about that referral of Dominic Ayene to the General Legal Council. Uh, basically, the party is asking uh, that that petition be withdrawn and uh, uh, also made a statement that hauling Dr. Dominic Ayene before the General Legal Council is part of a grand scheme by the Chief Justice, uh, Enini Aboa, to silence people or intimidate, that was the word he used, intimidate people whose opinions are at variance with his. Uh, definitely there will be more reactions to this and we'll definitely bring that to you in subsequent bulletins. But that'll be it uh, for News Desk. Mapito CBD is standing by for John News Interactive. I'm Bernice Abubedulansa. Thank you for your company. <laughs>